Jones Show. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones. It's the time of the season. You're going to draw the line, Chuck. How well, are you going to know? I, I, I'm, is that I'm too saying, high? Is that you're okay with that margin for? I have no problem as long as we achieve our objective, and our objective is to get the guys who did 9/11, and it is to avoid another attack against the United States. I was prepared, uh, and we did. We got the authorization from the president and authorization from the Justice Department to go forward to the program. It worked. It worked now for 13 years. Mm -hmm. We've avoided another mass casualty attack against the United States. We did capture bin Laden. We did capture an awful lot of the senior guys of al-Qaeda who were responsible for that attack on 9-11. I'd do it again in a minute. And the Easter Bunny is real as well, and Dick Cheney is a conservative. I know the neocon uh, rhino Republican media tells you 24-7 that George W. Bush and uh, Dick Cheney are real conservatives, but that's like saying that uh, a transvestite is really a woman. Or that a pig dressed up in a tutu is uh, really a woman. I mean, it's just not true, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fraud. It's false. You know what? I just thought of something. Because I've got all this important news to cover on this live Sunday edition. Already the 14th day of December, 2014. I thought, why don't I open the phones up? Because we're on a lot of conservative radio stations around the country that have everything from constitutionalists to mainline rhinos listening. And I hear you guys calling into talk radio, calling into affiliates I'm on. Saying, we need to get tough. I like torture. It's good. Oh, yeah. We lose the moral high ground when we do that. Then you get into the fact that our government's been funding radical Islam and allowing it to grow and attack so they can take our liberties. But just at the basic level of you can't stoop down to somebody else's level and not become dirty. In fact, I saw ISIS. If you guys reprint this. It was all over the news for Friday. You know, IS, Al-Qaeda, uh, you know, criticizes U.S. for torture report. I think they called us uh, infidels, the words kafar or something. That's the group that tortures constantly and chops heads off and, and, and abuses little kids and stuff and kills them and forces people to suicide bomb or they'll shoot their families. I just love that scum of the earth group. You don't get much scummier. It's not propaganda that radical Wahhabists are just as bad as you can get. It's like an army of uh, Charlie Mansons or something. I mean, they're nuts. Just look at their eyes and then look at the fruits of what they do. They are bad news. But the big mega banks hold their chain of financing and allow them to operate to menace the world and giving up our freedoms. And then they say, oh, let us torture them at Camp X-Ray. They got a bunch of 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds there that were conscripted in Afghanistan and stuff and forced to fight. And then you turn around after eight, nine years of captivity, they end up being released to run ISIS brigades. You know why? Because it's on record. They're CIA, Mossad, Shimbat, Turkish intelligence, Pakistani intelligence, double agents. They are produced in those torture facilities. They are prepared. They are broken. Just like Mandela was broken, whether you think he was a good guy or a bad guy, in 30-something years in prison, he came out run by the Major De Beers Oppenheimer interest to be the front man. Well, they take some 17-year-old, some of them 14 years old, put them in Camp X-Ray. For some of them, it have been 10 years, and then they're released, and so they just keep showing up commanding armies. They're cutouts, folks. They're cutouts. And if you look at how they would produce child soldiers in Africa, it was with torture. Africa has a formulae 
African countries, African warlords for this, and the CIA has adopted it, and it is despicable. So beyond torture, they're producing child soldiers, not just at X-Ray. That's just the public promotion prison. They got over 100 black or ghost sites all over the world. We're going to break it all down, and I'm going to open the phones for people that want to come on and say how great all of this is. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Stay with us. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra-clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift. Secure your Secret 12 formula before December 17th at InfoWarsLife.com and receive it before Christmas guaranteed. That's InfoWarsLife.com before December 17th or by calling 888-253-3139. As a community moves towards despotism, respect is restricted to fewer people. That's veteran Denver police officer Charles Jones IV smashing an unarmed suspect in the face six times. Officers accused of using excessive force on a suspect and then trying to erase the evidence of... I'm observing what they're doing and they're arresting me. I don't understand what's going on. A community rates low on an information scale... When the press, radio, and other channels of communication are controlled by only a few people. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? How can you ask such a question? What difference at this point does it make? When a competent observer looks for signs of despotism in the community, he looks beyond fine words and noble phrases. There are actions I have the legal authority to take as president that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. Tonight, I'm announcing those actions. What I say goes, see? I'm the law around here. <laughs> he came, he saw, he died. <laughs> yes, in modern warfare, our military leaders are finding that words and ideas are highly effective weapons. You just have to be repetitive about this. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. We are trained to deceive if we have to. You really don't have to trust me. You shouldn't trust me. In fact, by my actually participating in that, I will taint the news. In communities of this kind, despotism stands a good chance. The nine most terrifying words in the English language are... I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Okay, Miss Hughes, well, we're, we're going to do everything we can to help you. <laughs> Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's The Alex Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. Waging war on corruption, crashing through the lies and disinformation. We're live every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central, and back weekdays, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com are the major news sites. You can follow us on Twitter at RealAlexJones. Let me just calmly lay out the top stories today. Mikhail Thalen of Infowars.com. Police say armored military vehicles, quote, needed for war with constitutionalists, close quote, with firearms, Quote, we've got a lot of constitutionalists, a lot of people that stockpile weapons that will, quote, be taking enemy fire from. This out of a county in Washington state, the big MRAPs from Iraq. Now, here's the issue. Big cities probably need things like this because they might actually run into bank robbers or terrorist groups occasionally. And it's certainly useful to protect police that are moving into an area. But the main deployment of this to even small towns in the training manuals that we've gotten from the FBI and federal marshals, I mean, we're the ones that usually break those. I mean, everybody knows that. It was a secret, you know, seven years ago. Now it's public. 
that it's for returning veterans, gun owners, tea partiers, and they teach the police that a civil war is coming. This is the fifth clip that I've seen in 2014. In fact, I'm going to have Watson tomorrow for Infowars.com, I think, do a blurb article showing the last four or five articles. It's probably more, but I, I, I mean, I was able to pull up four or five other examples this year where police chiefs and others to the media say, we need these tanks for the constitutionalist. So, so the point is not a debate about do they need this or not. I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Let the police have full auto. Let them have armor. Let them have whatever if it's a major metropolitan area or whatever, because nowadays, you know, who knows, drug cartels, I mean, look at Mexico. But it's for the American people, and it's for groups that are not committing crimes. It was never set up to fight al-Qaeda. They first started deploying this stuff after 9-11, and it's always used, and they, and they say for Waco-style stuff. Well, they started the fight at Waco. They could have arrested Koresh any time. I interviewed the sheriff. He was on record saying he was in town every day. They had a business in town. He jogged off the property every morning. We said arrest him if you've got proof of him molesting kids. And instead they went and opened fire on the building to set a precedent of attacking the American people to demonize that cult. Probably was a cult. A lot of what they said about him wasn't true, but it was a cult. I know the Davidians. A lot of them. Some are very nice people. But some of them were cult-like. Doesn't matter. You don't blow it up and burn it down with the Delta Force. That's who was there. I watched the C-SPAN hearings. I'll be on other you know, radio shows, and I'll bring that up. And they go, oh, Delta Force. Yeah, right. They don't even know that was in the official congressional report. Our military there murdering those people. We have the FLIR footage from the helicopters and from the aircraft that the FBI was forced to release in court with the troops behind the tanks in an infantry maneuver shooting up the building and shooting people that were trying to get out the back. Now, I'm digressing with a history lesson there. The point is that's coming up. Police, armored military vehicles needed for constitutionalists with firearms. I'm going to cover that, though, in the next hour. The video is on InfoWars. Dot com right now. There is a major arms buildup for a war on American gun owners during national gun confiscation. That's a fact. That's what the federal government is training for, and they now admit it. And it's treasonous. Just like Obama signing an executive order to legalize the illegals and let them bring in their families and legalize people that have aggravated felonies, and the Republicans are not blocking it. The Republican leadership, just like the Republican leadership, just voted on this giant spending bill that has what we warned you of last week, provisions bigger than the banker bailout to write off all derivatives in the future as they get ready for the next big collapse. That'll make 2008 look like a cakewalk, look like a blip compared to an explosion. Derivatives are bigger than they were six years ago, seven years ago. And they are writing these treasonous bills that are set to pass the Senate. It's going to the president's desk. In fact, it passed the Senate. Uh, Ted Cruz came out and said it's a nightmare. Uh, Rand Paul's come out and said it's highly destructive. We're going to go over those voting numbers. That's coming up later in the hour as well. Two examples of media censorship I want to look at overseas that tie into what's now starting to happen here under uh, political correctness rubrics. China will arrest you if you play the national anthem outside of an official state function. And that dovetails where they're trying to pass laws where you can't burn the American flag. I don't like burning the American flag, but if you take somebody's First Amendment right to do it, you've now become China. Then they can do it on every other subject. And then I've got another one. Turkey arrests 27, including police and media, for criticizing the president who's basically a dictator. Turkish police officers and media workers are detained in Roundup. That's in the New York Times. And, of course, we're allies with them, the crooks that run our country, so they just call it, oh, they were detained. That's like in The Running Man, written by Stephen King, when you're disappeared, they go, oh, he was just detained, and you're really dead. See how they use words to play these games? Oh, you, you are, we heard you criticize. Oh, but we don't call Turkey a tyranny. You just say, I don't like the president. You're, you're, you're disappeared into a Turkish dungeon. And let me tell you, out of all the torturers, Turkish torture is known as some of the worst. In fact, the old joke is, it's worse than a Turkish prison.
Oh, but Turkey's good. They're not radical. They're not bad. They're the worst in the Middle East next to Saudi Arabia. And they're being merged into the EU. How would you like to have that country merged into you? And they slaughtered all those Armenians. The list goes on and on. This is just some of what's going on. Now, shifting gears before I get into all that.